Principal Chief Hoskins, would you please proceed and unmute? Well, I thank the committee. I thank uh, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chair Chairperson Murkowski, and of course the staff uh, for their time and attention to this issue. I'm Chuck Hoskins, Jr., Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. It's my honor to serve as Chief of the Cherokee Nation, the largest tribe in the United States. Uh, among our tribal citizens are many artists, artisans, and craft people who uh, perpetuate Cherokee culture through their art. Uh, I applaud the desire to strengthen the Indian Arts and Crafts Act. It's an important law, and it's one that we uh, must regularly examine uh, in order to protect Native American artists and to protect consumers. It is a truth in advertising law, and it is one that is important for the country. Uh, I cannot, however, support the Artist Act in its current form because it fails to address what federally recognized tribes and artists from federally recognized tribes have long called for, which is the inclusion of state recognized tribes. Now the current statute defines Indian and Indian tribes far too broadly. It extends protections to members of state recognized tribes. I want to be plain, I want to be clear, state recognized tribes are not Indian tribes. And a member of one of these organizations are not Indian tribes, are not citizens of Indian nations. So the most important change that Congress can make and should make uh, in the next uh, iteration of the Indian Arts and Crafts Act is to narrow the definition of Indian and Indian tribes so that it ensures that works are only uh, covered uh, if they are produced by members of federally recognized tribes. Uh, you must be a member of a federally recognized tribe to be an Indian within the meaning of the act. And that, of course, is based on uh, the tribe's inherent sovereignty to determine its citizenship. And so why is this important to Indian country in general, and why is it important to the Cherokee Nation? At least 10 of these uh, so-called tribes recognized by straight states falsely claim Cherokee history and culture. So under the current law, under the current Indian Arts and Crafts Act, members of these fraudulent groups, none of whom have a legitimate che claim to Cherokee culture, may produce and sell art and call these works Cherokee. So we have wonderful artists in the Cherokee Nation, and I can imagine one of our great Cherokee National Treasures uh, producing art that is something time-honored, handed down from generation to generation, frankly from generations that were at times suppressed in terms of our ability to create uh, and find a marketplace for our art, sitting alongside one of these fake tribes in a gallery or shop. It's wrong, but the federal law uh, gives a blanket of protection around those fake tribes that are competing with the actual Cherokee tribes. There are, by the way, three federally recognized Cherokee tribes, the Cherokee Nation and two bands, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians uh, in North Carolina and the Oklahoma-based United Katua Band of Cherokee Indians. Only citizens of these tribes can produce Cherokee arts and crafts. Uh, they own, they're the only ones that have a legitimate nexus to Cherokee culture, and yet they compete alongside these fake organizations posing as tribes, even when those organizations have some sort of uh, mix of any of the 50 different standards, if any standards exist, for state recognition. The law needs to be changed. If, it is in, if its intent is to protect those who need the protection, if it's to lift up those that need a foothold in the marketplace, if it is to protect consumers, then the law needs to be changed to narrow that definition to what really is the standard across the country with some very limited exceptions, which is that federal recognition is the standard. Uh, this is a problem that is ongoing. Often these organizations will sell membership into their organizations. Uh, it's something that needs examination by this committee. It needs correction. Indian country is not going to tolerate this. The Intertribal Council of the Five Tribes in Oklahoma, one of the largest organizations in the country representing Native Indian people, has recently called for this action. Certainly as chief of the Cherokee Nation, I have called upon our citizens to undertake a grassroots effort to affect this change. I ask the committee to make this overdue change. What do? Thank you, Chief Hawkins.